Let's farm the backyard. Hey guys, and welcome back to Horticulture Geek. I'm Ray. Thank you so much for joining me today as we talk about farming the backyard. So if you are a follower of our channel, you know that we live on a small residential lot here in an urban setting outside of Little Rock, Arkansas, Zone 7B. And as you can see behind me, I've got lots of things in the ground. We have lots of plantings, but we also still grow our veggies and our crops. And so it is absolutely possible to farm your backyard. And so today I'm going to walk around and show you everything we're growing here in our backyard and some of the things that we're planning on doing. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and let you follow me around and we'll see what we're doing here in our backyard. All right, here we are at the first raised bed that I wanted to show you. This raised bed is two feet wide by 24 feet long. Um, and this raised bed was put here because it was otherwise unusable space in the garden. Um, I'm setting on a concrete driveway. You can kind of see it right behind me here, um, up against a fence. And so that left me only with about a four inch strip of dirt that was pretty much unusable to me. Um, I did have some things planted in it, but I really couldn't plant anything of substance here because I just didn't have the space. And so the raised bed allowed me to bring the soil on top of the concrete out the two feet. And I went 24 feet long, like I said, to put in usable gardening space. Um, and right now I have got broccolis, cabbages, lettuces, onions, peanuts, cucumbers, and I'm putting in pole beans. Um, I'm fixing to put those in on this cattle panel here. Um, cattle panel, hog panel, handy panel, they go by many different names. Um, I actually picked this handy panel up at Tractor Supply. It's one of the smallest they offer. Um, it is called the handy panel and it is $13. And I have a second one to install right over here, which we will show in just a minute. But this is super simple and a great way to go into vertical gardening space. So all I have here are hooks. Those hooks keep the handy panel off the fence to allow for plenty of room for plants to grow up and vine up. Um, and then they will still leave productive space in the bed in front. So I will do a row of pole beans here. And down here, if you follow me, we can see I've got cucumbers in the ground here already planted. And this trellis I still have to install. So I'm going to do that with you real quick so you can see how easy it is to pop one of these cattle panels up. Now, I know a lot of YouTubers use these. They put them on um, posts that they drive in the ground or they hoop them over and make tunnels out of them. But this is just another way. If you're in an urban setting and you have a privacy fence on your property, use that to your advantage. Put you in an in-ground garden if you have the space or a raised bed if you have the space and use the handy panel right on your fence to do vertical gardening. So let me get set up and we're going to install this panel. All right, so to install a panel onto a fence like I'm doing here, you really only need two things, a panel and hooks. So these are just cheap hooks that I picked up at Lowe's. You can also pick them up at Home Depot. I think you can pick them up at Walmart. Any hardware store will have these. Um, and these are the kind that have a screw head on one end and a hook on the other. Um, and they are two inches long, which gives you the clearance to get your handy panel off of the fence. Now, a third thing that you can use, which I am going to use, is a drill, just to pre-drill my holes. But you do not even have to have this. You can hand crank these in without that. So, to do this, we really don't even need a tape measure or anything fancy. All we're gonna do is I have the cattle panel setting on top of my raised bed, on top of the wood. And then I'm just gonna come right above the top of the panel. And I'm just gonna arbitrarily come up a little bit and pop in a... All right. A 
And once we have our hole in there, we can just take our hook and get it in there. And then our handy panel clips right in. And that's all it takes to install a handy panel. Um, for this particular handy panel, I will put three across the top, another one here and another one here. And then I'll put two kind of down the way here just to hold it in place to keep it stable and, and ready to go. So this is a prime example again of how an urban gardener or farmer can squeeze productive land into a small space. Don't forget to look at your hidden square footage to grow things. Let's go behind the shed here and we'll look at another spot. So here we are beside the shed over here and I wanted to point out a grapevine. Um, this is just a grapevine that I picked up at a big box store and have planted here on the fence. Um, again, this is another trick for safe space saving. Um, all that was done here is cordage was tied to the side of the fence to allow the grapevine to anchor up and come up the side of the fence and now it's crawling out so we can actually have a productive grape harvest here in the backyard let's head this way and look at another raised bed all right so here we are in the back of the shed and i've got another raised bed in this was another spot that was hard to deal with <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of usable space back here and I couldn't plant the whole thing because I, it was it's a utilitarian area. I've got things back here stored that I'm going to try to keep off camera, but I needed more growing space. So again, a raised bed was a perfect solution. This raised bed is 12 feet long and two and a half feet wide. Um, and this year in this raised bed, I have got potatoes and garlic. So I've got red potatoes here and Idaho potatoes here. And then I've got three varieties of garlic growing. These garlics were planted in the fall and we should be looking at a good harvest this June. And I also have trellises back here to where I can grow more vertical crops like green beans, pole beans, peas, cucumbers, anything that vines and go will go up a trellis. I have the ability to do that here as well. All right, so here in the main garden, um, we have set up a potager style garden. And all that means is I mix vegetable crops in with my ornamentals, uh, flowers, shrubbery, all that stuff. This is something that every urban gardener can do. Um, don't feel like because you have a flower bed that has bushes or perennials or something in there that you can't put crops in. You absolutely can intermingle your crops with your flowers and shrubs. So here I have leeks growing on the edge there. I have a tomato. I have basil. I have jalapeno peppers. I have bell peppers. I have banana peppers. I have celery and I have zucchini and squash. And I also have asparagus growing on the edge. So wherever you can find space to tuck in your food crops, your edible crops, pop them in there and make it work. All right, I wanted to pause here on this side of the bed so I could show you that the zucchini especially is really doing wonderful. I've already got zucchinis coming onto the plant. They are starting to grow and get big. Um, the squash is already setting fruit and we have tons of pepper buds and tomato blooms. So before very long here in our urban garden, we are gonna have lots of food production coming out of our garden right next to shrubs, perennials, and flowers. The next stop on our garden tour is right here because for urban gardeners, sometimes you have to get creative and use containers and container gardens can be anything that you have available to you. It can be a beautiful uh, glazed pot like this, anything down to a five gallon plastic bucket. Whatever you have, whatever you're willing to put in your space, you can make it work. So here in this container, I've got cabbages, dianthus, and dusty miller. It makes a beautiful pot. It looks beautiful in the garden. 
but I'm growing food all at the same time. Things like cabbages and tomatoes, um, any, lots of peppers make wonderful container additions because in addition to being food that we can eat, they're very ornamental and look really attractive. So don't forget that you can grow stuff in pots and containers around your yard as well. And I also wanted to point out to you something that a lot of urban gardeners overlook or gardeners in general overlook. This is a green onion plant. Um, this is absolutely a green onion that we picked up at a supermarket. And once we were done using the green onion tops, we were left with the root. When you buy green onions, they always come with the root and the green stem. Plant your green onion roots. They are wonderful ornamentals in the garden. And then once it grows, it provides you with the flower seed heads, which are very attractive. But you have tons of green onions that you can use. So this is green onion. It can be diced up, sliced up, and used in cooking or as garnishes in any meal. It's wonderful. The other thing that you cannot forget about in an urban garden is your herbs. Herbs are a wonderful addition to the urban garden. Whether you cook with herbs a lot or, or not, you still want to include them in your garden. Like this melon sage here is a garden anchor. It absolutely flowers and is beautiful. It smells wonderful. It's a pollinator, a tractor, and it's just beautiful. And if you wanted to harvest some of the leaves and take in, you absolutely can do that. Um, this is, like I said, a melon sage. You can get pineapple sage, regular sage, cooking sage, garden sage. All sages are edible and can be used in drinks, cocktails, and food preparations. Wonderful addition not to overlook in the urban garden. All right, here's another food production area in my garden. I have got a pepper here, which is a sweet banana pepper. I've got a Tabasco pepper, and under this cloach, I have an eggplant. Now, I have rabbits in my areas, and rabbits really tend to like eggplants, so I keep mine under a cloach as long as I can to protect it from little garden buddies who want to munch on it. So that's something that you may have to deal with in your area as well. Another thing to keep in mind is nasturtiums. Um, I've got nasturtiums just getting ready to break up this trellis here. Um, nasturtiums, in addition to being edible, you can eat nasturtiums. They're very peppery, good in salads and greens. They um, are attractors for aphids. So we will let that nasturtium be our sacrificial lamb and it will draw the aphids that come to the garden to it and keep them off of our food crops. All right, in this container, just like the last one, don't forget your containers. I have a sun gold tomato. A good spot for a tomato plant is in a container. They tend to do really well. I've mixed this one with some sunflower, some dwarf sunflower seeds. So I will actually get some beautiful sunflower blooms off of this, and this sun gold tomato will absolutely be a showstopper as a centerpiece in this container. All right, we are here in this raised bed area on the side of the house. Now this is important to note because we, I put this raised bed in directly against the side of the house, against the brick. Um, I'm lucky I do have brick siding on this home, and what I have planted here, this is not a very deep raised bed. Um, it is only one board high, but I have okra and corn planted in this bed. So I've got Clemson spineless, purple okra, and I've got some purple corn growing here as well. Um, these things will do well in this raised bed against the side of the house because both okra and corn like to have heat and sun and as the sun hits the side of the brick the brick will then radiate that heat back on the plants all day long so this is a good spot where some gardeners may not even try to grow anything just because it's kind of a, a hot spot but you can absolutely pick the right crops put them in and use the space you have to your advantage the last area here in the urban garden i want to talk to you guys about today 
is this bed right here. This is my strawberry patch. Um, and that is an area here under this tree, right at the base of this tree here in the backyard. That was a horrible spot to try to grow things. I had tried unsuccessfully for a while to try to get things to grow here, but the tree just zaps too much water out of the soil. Strawberries have done wonderful for me here. They come on early, early in the spring, and they are tough little plants. They spread out. They are filling this bed. They're loving their spot. So strawberries are something good for an urban farmer if you have a tough spot in your garden where you need something that will thrive that's really not looking, really won't work anywhere else. So strawberries are something good to add to your edible harvest. Well guys, I hope you have enjoyed that tour of my vegetable areas here in the garden and seeing what food crops we're growing this year at the Horticulture Geek Gardens. Um, I want you to know that you can do backyard gardening. Anybody can do this. Regardless of your situation or circumstance, if you have the desire, you can find the way. Um, whether that be getting pots from the Dollar Tree and doing the best you can, or whether that be going to a garden center and buying pottery that costs you hundreds of dollars to grow things in. Whatever your situation and circumstance allows, you can absolutely grow. And we all grow the same crops in the end. So it's just whatever you enjoy, whatever your family will eat, get out in your garden and do some farming. Anybody can do it. I hope this video has been an encouragement to you. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've got growing here. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. That's one of the best ways to help us out. You can also share this video. If you know somebody that's interested in getting into backyard gardening, but doesn't quite understand how or why, share this video with them. Maybe it will help them on their journey. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And until next time, from my garden to yours, I wish you all the best and happy gardening.